Hidden beneath the brutal Sahara Desert lies more than 1,000 tons of untapped gold, a massive treasure buried under scorching sand and sun-baked rock. Thousands of African gold miners dig deep into this dead land, turning over millions of cubic meters of burning sand just to find specks of gold smaller than a grain of dust. Finding gold in the middle of a desert is already unbelievable, but separating those tiny golden particles from dirt and rock using nothing but bare hands, with no modern machines, no clean water, not even shade, that's what truly shocks the world. Curious how this hunt for gold unfolds in a place where life shouldn't exist at all? Let's uncover it together, here on Mandarin Tech. Gold has been part of human life since the days when people still lived in caves. More than 6,000 years ago, during the Neolithic era, it was already being used to make jewelry, sacred objects, and special items reserved for rulers and elites. What makes gold truly unique isn't just its shine, it's how it endures through time. It doesn't rust, it doesn't fade, and it barely wears down. In a world that's always changing, gold is one of the few things that never has to prove its worth again. That's why it has become a lasting symbol of power, wealth, and trust. You won't often find gold just lying on the ground. Most of it hides deep inside ancient rocks like quartz or sediment, formed and compressed over millions of years. Over time, wind and water break those rocks apart, carrying tiny gold particles into rivers and streams. Gold forms in much the same way under the scorching Sahara sun. Ancient quartz veins buried deep beneath the sand are compressed and transformed over millions of years. It's estimated that the Sahara holds several thousand tons of gold, enough to turn what seems like a dead land into one of Africa's biggest gold mining hotspots. Now let's move to Mauritania, a place often described as living on top of gold. But here gold doesn't sit shining behind glass displays. It hides beneath red dust, sweat, and childhoods left behind. Under the burning sun, entire families, including children who can't even spell their own names, grip rusty shovels and follow their parents into the dry, cracked earth, hoping to find a few tiny flakes of gold. When each day comes with less than one dollar to survive, gold mining isn't a job. It's the thin thread keeping them alive. But the price of gold isn't paid only with labor. It's paid with the health of children who grow up in dust instead of dreams. Their classroom is the riverbank. Their toys are digging tools. For them, gold isn't a symbol of wealth. It's simply the only chance to make it through one more day. A day of gold hunting begins with nothing more than a handheld metal detector and a sharp pair of ears. The miners walk slowly, eyes fixed on the ground, listening for the faintest beeps from their device. Every sound sparks a bit of hope. Maybe a piece of gold is hiding beneath their feet. But this work isn't just luck. Skilled miners know exactly where to look around old quartz veins, shale formations, or areas where water once carried gold across the land. When the detector finally picks up a signal, the whole group starts digging, and that's when the real work begins. The pits grow deeper and deeper, sometimes reaching dozens of meters, dug only with shovels, picks, and human strength. There's no machinery to help. In many places, people use tree trunks to brace the tunnels, yet the risk of collapse is always lurking. The deeper they go, the miners have to crawl through tight, narrow tunnels, barely wide enough to lie on their side. Each pit is a gamble. They might find nothing at all, or they might uncover a chunk of ore worth an entire month's pay. The miners had to follow ropes to climb down, and the deeper they went, the more they were forced to crawl through narrow tunnels barely wide enough to lie on their sides. In the darkness, the only light came from their flickering headlamps. Every shovel of dirt carried a spark of hope because the gold wasn't found in chunks. It was hidden in tiny grains locked inside dusty rocks as if testing their patience. Heavy bags of earth are tied with ropes and pulled up using simple makeshift pulleys. They're all piled into heaps, waiting for their turn to be crushed and broken down. Each bag is like a lottery ticket. You never know what you'll get until the soil has been processed. The heavy bags of earth, freshly hauled up from deep underground, begin their second journey, one filled with uncertainty where each bag might hold a stroke of luck or nothing at all. 
They're dumped onto a long conveyor belt that clatters across steel rollers, slowly moving toward a massive metal hopper waiting at the end. The hopper sits like a gaping mouth, ready to swallow anything that comes its way. Waves of gray-brown soil crash down, slamming against the steel walls before spiraling violently into the jaws of the crusher. Water is pumped continuously to keep the dust down, cool the machinery, and create a thick slurry that helps wash away lighter materials. As the muddy mixture flows through, the heavier particles, including any gold, slowly sink to the bottom while the lighter sediment is carried away. This is the first real moment of separation, but it's still only the beginning. When the crushing process is finished, the excess water is drained off, and the remaining material is moved to another area for a step that is both more precise and far more dangerous, adding mercury. Even though mercury is notoriously toxic, capable of causing cancer and severe neurological disorders, it's still the only chemical people here can afford and the only one that can dissolve gold, pulling it away from the remaining impurities. Workers have to knead this mercury-soaked mixture for 20 to 30 minutes until it thickens into a dense gray paste, an amalgam where gold and mercury fuse together under both pressure and desperation. The lump is then heated, causing the mercury to evaporate and disappear into the air, leaving the raw gold behind. The process is simple, primitive, and devastating. Every gram of gold pulled from this method carries an invisible price. The health of the miners, especially the children, kids who breathe in the toxic fumes long before they're old enough to understand the danger. To produce just 9.25 ounces of gold, worth about $2,400, miners have to dig up and process more than 19,000 tons of earthen rock, and yet the people doing this work earn only $1 or $2 a day. In sharp contrast to the harsh, manual gold mining seen in many parts of Africa, the United States relies on modern machinery and advanced technology to extract gold on a massive scale. This approach not only boosts efficiency, but also helps reduce some of the environmental impact. Now let's head to a gold mine in Nevada, where you'll see firsthand just how different the search for gold can be when technology and innovation lead the way. The first step in modern gold mining is drilling deep holes into the ground, usually between 9 and 20 meters. A massive drill rig like this, mounted on a heavy-duty truck and covered in hydraulic lines, drives steel pipes straight into solid rock with incredible precision and power. The drill holes are then packed with explosives, carefully prepared to break apart the solid rock layers. Technicians place detonators into each hole, and a single blast area can contain anywhere from 50 to 100 charge points, all wired together and timed with absolute precision. When it's time to fire, the entire set of explosives goes off at once. The powerful blasts shake the whole area, sending thick plumes of smoke rising into the sky. The force is strong enough to tear apart an entire section of the mountainside, shattering massive rock formations into thousands of smaller pieces, making the next stage of collecting and extracting the gold far easier. Once the massive rock formations have been blasted into thousands of smaller pieces, the heavy excavators move in. With each scoop, they gather the gold-bearing ore and load it onto long conveyor systems running along the edge of the mine. These systems are built for continuous operation, moving the ore smoothly and efficiently from the blast zone to a temporary stockpile with almost no downtime. The entire process is closely monitored to maximize speed and minimize loss. From there, the sorted ore piles are loaded onto gigantic haul trucks, each capable of carrying dozens of tons in a single trip. These trucks move in steady lines, transporting the ore to the processing plant. At the processing plant, the ore is carried across fully automated conveyor systems, allowing it to move quickly and seamlessly throughout the entire facility. Even though each ton of rock contains only about 0.05% gold, roughly a single gram of gold hidden among thousands of grams of stone, that tiny amount is far from unreachable. With advanced refining technology, the plant can separate and recover that extremely small fraction of gold with impressive accuracy and efficiency. The gold ore is fed into a massive ball mill, a machine filled with tens of thousands of steel balls, 
each weighing anywhere from a few pounds to more than 60 pounds, adding up to hundreds of tons of solid steel. As the mill rotates, the steel balls roll and drop onto the ore, crushing it with enormous impact force. Bit by bit, the rock is ground down into fine dust. This grinding process runs continuously for 20 to 30 minutes, breaking the ore until it's almost powder. At this stage, separating the gold becomes far easier and far more efficient. Next, water is added to the crushed ore, turning it into a thick, mud-like slurry. This viscosity makes it easier to separate the gold from unwanted materials. The mixture is then carried along conveyor systems and directed into large outdoor tanks, where the gold is extracted through a combination of chemical reactions and mechanical processes. As the ore slurry is poured into the large outdoor tanks, the gold separation process begins with a simple but effective step, physical separation. After that, chemicals like cyanide are added to dissolve the remaining gold, allowing it to separate from the impurities still trapped in the ore. The gold-bearing solution is then pumped into an electrolytic cell where a steady direct current is passed through it. Inside the tank, gold ions migrate toward the negative electrode and gradually form a solid metallic layer building up on its surface. The entire process is carried out under tightly controlled conditions to ensure that the recovered gold reaches nearly 100% purity. After the electrolysis process is complete and the pure gold has been separated, the metal moves into the smelting stage where it's heated to extremely high temperatures, around 1,000 to 1,200 down dollars sores. The goal of this step is to remove any remaining impurities and melt the gold into a liquid form so it can be easily poured into molds. Smelting also makes the gold softer and more uniform, creating ideal conditions for casting it into bars. This step not only shapes the gold into industry standard ingots, but also preserves its purity as it cools and solidifies. The gold bars begin to take shape as the molten metal is poured into molds and allowed to cool slowly in open air. Once solidified, the metal becomes hard, shiny, and takes on the clean, rectangular form of a standard commercial gold bar. Next, each bar is placed on a scale to determine its exact weight. On average, a gold bar weighs between 1 and 2 kilograms, with a purity of about 99.99%, leaving less than 0.01% of metallic impurities behind. After being weighed and inspected, the gold undergoes a cleaning step using a mild acid solution. This process removes any remaining impurities, such as heavy metals and compounds left over from smelting. The mild acid dissolves all of these residues without affecting the pure gold itself. The purified gold bars are then transported to major U.S. banks, including the Federal Reserve, where they are stored in highly secure vaults under the watch of specialized security teams. The gold is safeguarded with strict protection measures to ensure maximum safety and complete confidentiality. These gold vaults play a crucial role in maintaining the nation's financial reserves. From these refined gold bars, the precious metal is carefully transported to specialized jewelry manufacturing facilities. First, the gold is reheated in high temperature furnaces, so it becomes softer and more malleable making it easier to shape. Once the gold reaches the desired level of flexibility, it's fed through powerful rolling machines where intense pressure compresses and stretches it into long, thin strips or into delicate wires so fine they feel almost like silk. The fine gold wires are then fed into specialized chain-making machines where they are coiled and shaped into tiny, precise links. Each link is assembled carefully, either by hand or with automated tools to form a seamless gold chain. Depending on the design, these chains can vary in thickness and style, from delicate and subtle to bold and eye-catching, matching a wide range of customer preferences. Once assembled, the chains go through a meticulous polishing process to achieve a smooth finish and a high shine. Before reaching the final stage, every gold strand and completed chain is inspected closely by eye to ensure it meets strict quality standards. Only the pieces that pass inspection are packaged and sent to market for distribution and sale. You've just traveled with us from Africa to the Americas to discover how gold is truly made. 
If after watching, the word gold now carries more meaning than ever before, feel free to share your thoughts in the comments. And if this journey sparked your curiosity and helped you understand what lies behind the shimmering glow of this precious metal, don't forget to hit follow so you won't miss the fascinating and unexpected stories still waiting ahead.